So here's Steam Engine, which is a program that's free to download and use, which will help you build your coil. Now, before we even begin, I just want to say that these are my observations of this program and how to use it, and you should check other resources before going ahead to build your own coil. I will not be responsible for any accidents you have due to the usage of this program or my descriptions herein. There we go. So that aside, here we go. We've got Steam Engine, which is a coil wrapping program, yes. And here's the address, Steam Engine. Don't forget the little dash dot org. You don't have to put this part in there, but just this first part will be sufficient. And once you do, you can choose coil wrapping, and here we go. This is what it entails. It's basically, as you may notice, three columns. The first column is all this stuff here that you put your values in based on what you're going to use. The second column is some information that you're going to put in. And this third column right here has two sections. This section which is outlined in a blue rectangle. Inside that blue rectangle will contain your results. You do not put information in here. Information is displayed for you here. This last section, heat flux, uh, is something that you can adjust to see what you should set your mod at based on the stuff up here. Okay, so let's begin right from the beginning. First thing you want to do is either choose metric or imperial units. It doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. Myself, I prefer the old metric units. Don't worry about advanced and reset at this point. The first thing you should really think about is what kind of material are you going to use to build your coil, and what is its shape? Is it round wire? Is it flat wire? Is it twisted wire? What the heck is it? So first, let's deal with this box right here. You choose the kind of wire that you want to use. For example, if you're wealthy, you can choose gold. I don't know why, but you could. All the various wires, or most of the various wires you will encounter, are listed there. Let's take a look. Canthal A1, Canthal A. This is the one that's most commonly used, Canthal A1. Canthal D nichromes. If you're going to build with nichrome, it depends which wire you've purchased. Stainless steel, same thing. The common one was right here, 316L. That's the most common. Then your gold, silver, copper, and titanium becoming popular. And last but certainly not least, nickel. So, and a whole bunch of different other kinds of wire. But let's just choose Canthal. So you click on that and there you go. And your choices here, as I mentioned before, you could use round or round that's twisted or round that's parallel or flat wire. We'll just use standard round wire. The AWG, which is the American wire gauge, can be uh, any number you'd like. Notice as I change the gauge number, this one changes as well. This is just a measurement in millimeters of the wire you're going to use. So let's start by using a 24 gauge Canthal wire. Why? Well, you could use any gauge you'd like, but just remember when you're done with your build, you don't want to end up with 35 wraps, right? No. So we'll start there at 24. We're going to build a single coil. You could build a, an octa coil. I don't know why you'd want to do that out of your gold material, I suppose. Eight coils and one atomizer seems a bit excessive to me, but we'll build a single coil and we'll set our target resistance at, oh, let's go 0.5. That seems to be right in the middle of the sub-ohm range, doesn't it? So two little things left to punch in. See how easy this is? It's a piece of cake so far, isn't it? You're gonna punch in the diameter of the tool upon which you're going to wrap your coil. In other words, the inner diameter of the coil. You can use a nail, you can use a little baby screwdriver, you can use anything you want, you just have to measure it 
And once you get that measurement in millimeters, punch that measurement in right here. A very common measurement is three. All right, so the next thing is leg length. And we're just going to leave this at five millimeters. The leg length total means off the end of the coil, you have two little pieces sticking off, right, the wire. The total length of those wires after they they uh, are away from the coil is this number in millimeters, five. So five is a good number to put in. And lo and behold, Wango Z Tango, we have our results right here. It's telling us that the length, oh, look at that pop-up window. It tells you exactly what these things mean. How convenient is that? How long the wire should ideally be in order to reach your target resistance? You probably want to cut a little longer in practice so that you can mount it in your atomizer and then trim the ends. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So it's saying that you're going to need about 70.6, let's call it 71 millimeters, to make this coil. And you're going to wrap it around your tool of choice, five, as long as it's three millimeters, 5.19 times. Well, good luck finding... 0.19 of a wrap there. So they've rounded it to full wraps and they've rounded it to half wraps. Full wraps, as you can see here, has its coil legs pointing in opposite directions and half wraps mean that the coil legs are pointing in the same direction. So somewhere between 5 and 6 should get you right around that 0.5 ohm resistance. 5 to 6 wraps. Heat capacity is a number that tells you how quickly or slowly your coil is going to heat up. The higher the number, the slower the coil. The lower the number, the faster. That's called coil lag, I guess. Huh? Heat capacity, wire effects coil lag, yeah. Leg power loss, that's directly related to this number right here. 7.1%, I would say anything under 10% is good to go. And last, but certainly not least, is the heat flux. Now, this is another number you can play with. If you leave it just like this, oops, sorry. If you leave your coil built just this way exactly, Canthal 24 millimeter single wrapped around a 3 millimeter tool, and vape it at 23 watts, you will get a nice cool vape. That's what that ye uh, yellow, that green flame is all about. 200 is the heat flux. If you want a warmer vape, you can increase the heat flux to say 250. And now look at the flame turned orange. That means you've got a warm vape. And you should set your mod for 28 watts. If you're in voltage mode, set it for 3.8 uh, volts. If you like a hot vape, Make this 300, and there you go. Uh, you get a red flame, which means a hot vape, 34 watts or 4.1 volts on your mod, and that's what you got. So that's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Plug in this stuff, get out this stuff, and adjust to see what you get for hot and cold and warm vape. Now, once again, be careful. You don't want any of these numbers to get out of whack. As a matter of fact, below this chart, you've got all kinds of stuff that kind of gives you a little bit of warning and things to be careful about and all kinds of things to read. But again, remember, use this at your own risk. It's better than just guessing.